Hey guys, Super Top Love Final Wars here, and today I am back once again with another video. Today we're going to be discussing what if Cinder was Ruby's sister. Now, the reason why I say this is because, well, sorry about that, I got distracted. Anyways, as I was saying, so, you're wondering where did this idea came from? Well, I've been seeing a lot of, a lot of people talking about who is Cinder related to, and that about, and I also been seeing a lot of fan art about what if Cinder was like Summer's daughter or got adopted into the to Ruby's family. And how Cinder's character would have completely changed if she was Ruby's sister. Now, if we're talking about biologically related, then that would be a different story. I think almost half of Team Stark's backstory would change. It's even though we don't know that much about them besides of what we've been given to from the Ruby series. I feel like if Ruby was going to end, I feel like Team Stark should like like Team Stark should be like the next Ruby project that they should do. Like a prequel to the Ruby series, like explaining the backstory of Team Stark. How they began, like how Raven found out what Austin has been hiding, and etc. But let's just say in this scenario that Summer had Cinder before she kind of went into being a team leader. Or we can even say that she had Cinder when she was still being the team leader of Team Stark. And just kind of kept Cinder a secret from her own team. Now we can say who can, now the question will be who is the father of her child? Like who is Cinder's father? At this point, it's kind of a mystery. So Cinder's biological father is a mystery. But if anything, I can say that Cinder will not have the same bad childhood that she had in the canon series. If anything, I feel like Cinder will have the exact opposite backstory. Because if we take a look at Volume 8, we were, were, managed to get an, we were managed to get a look at Cinder's backstory and how she became what she is today. Which is honestly, somehow Cinder's earned the title as the less likable villain of the entire Ruby series. I don't know how she would was managed to earn that title. But, yeah, like I said, if Cinder was biologically related to Summer, she would not be given that same bad backstory that she got in the canon series. Instead, she will be given a much more happier backstory. And she will also somewhat have a new life being the daughter of Summer Rose. The, I think the only real time that she'll be questioning what her mother's been doing is, well, all the times that she disappeared and left Cinder with a babysitter. Besides of that, I don't think there'll be any major things that would make Cinder to become a villain. Which this also would mean that Kira would never die. And that she would not be declaring Ruby as her mortal enemy.
and Yang would lose the title as the big sister in the family. If anything, Cinder would be the big sister of the family. Not only that, we also need to take a look at the fact that Sean somewhat carries a deep hatred toward Cinder for obviously killing the girl that he liked. Plus, Mercury and Emerald would never, you could kind of say they would never, would have met Cinder or Salem, because Cinder was never there to encourage them to work for her. And let's be clear, I don't think Emerald and Mercury worked for Salem. They mostly worked for Cinder. They followed her orders, which means they were her minions not Salem's. And I think for a long time, we obviously knew that Cinder was planning on to dethrone Salem. She just needed the right people to do it. We honestly do know that Cinder does not like following Salem's orders. And that says something when it comes to a person who doesn't like following orders from this character. Let's take a look at a character who she relates to, Starscream. Except Cinder is not like Starscream. She's not constantly trying to take down well, Salem. She's buying her time. She's waiting for the right moment. And we saw that in Volume 8. We saw the fact that Cinder is clearly buying her time and waiting for the right moment to basically become the new big bad boss, you could say. The big bad main villain. And we're back onto the theory. So, again, Cinder would not have betrayed Beacon. If anything, she would be a part of Beacon. In fact, I think we can go as further to say that okay, that she can become the new who fall maiden and not Pura. We could say that in this scenario, Pura doesn't want to become the fall maiden, but instead, Cinder becomes the new fall maiden. So, in the end, I think the majority of the Ruby story would have changed. Now, how would Cinder adapt to her new family? Like her half -sis her half younger sister, Ruby, and her stepsister, Yang? Well, if we think about it, if Cinder had a happy childhood with, with Summer, then I don't think Cinder will have any problems with Ruby or Yang. If anything, I feel like she would get along with Ruby a lot more because Ruby is actually biologically related to her. I'm not saying that she can't get along with Yang, but I feel like she would have more of a deeper connection to Ruby and not Yang. We can kind of say that similar connection that Yang has with Ruby is the same with Cinder and Ruby. Cinder and Ruby would have a more deeper connection because they share the same mother. And Ruby and Yang share a similar connection because they share the same father. However, I can also see Cinder not wanting to be the one who would tolerate her 
younger sister being threatened because if Cinder was related to it is to Summer and got along with and had a good childhood with Summer and got along with Ruby and Yang, I feel like Cinder would be more protective of Ruby. Because we clearly saw that in Ruby that Yang is somewhat of a bad sister. We saw that in the constant episodes of each volume that Yang is trying to be be strong for Ruby. But at the same time, she's constantly being, well, you know, flirting with freaking Blake. And I feel like that Sorry about that. I thought I heard something. Anyways, yeah. So, I feel like since Blake, not Blake, Yang was always busy flirting with Blake, I feel like Cinder would be the one who would be overprotective of Ruby. We can even say that Cinder would be the one who won't, to- who won't tolerate anyone threatening Ruby, hurting her or calling her bad names. She'll be the sister who would end that person's life in a split second for hurting Ruby's feelings, or hurting Ruby in general, or insulting Ruby. So this also would mean that if we got that scene from Volume 9, Episode 7, and if Cinder was there, yeah, I feel like we would have to say goodbye to Sean, because, uh... (laughs) If he wasn't a match for Cinder and Volume Frickin' 5 and Frickin' 8, then what's the point for Volume 9, Sean, to stand a chance against Cinder? I mean, Cinder is basically a goddess, basically. With the Fall Maiden powers, she's basically a goddess. So, in the end, even Volume 9, John, would fail to fight against Cinder. This would also mean that Cinder would never lose her, never lost her eye or her arm for unknown reasons. I really don't know how she lost her eye and arm. Can someone explain to me in the comments below how does she lost her eye and arm? So, yeah, if anything, the majority of the Ruby series would have changed a lot. Beacon would never fall. Salem will have to look for a new crew. Emerald of Mercury would never have survived, and etc. So, I guess in the end, a lot of things would have changed if Cinder was related to Ruby. And was kind of a good guy, not a bad guy. So, yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say. So what do you think? What do you think would happen if Cinder was Ruby's sister? How do you think the Ruby series would have changed... And do you think that Volume 9 John would still stand a chance against Cinder, or will he still fall to her? Because if he falls from Volume 5 and 8, then what chance does he have against Cinder as Volume 9 John? And anyway, let me know in the comments below. Subscribe, type, like, and comment. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye-bye.